Hey, welcome to Perk Stream. It's April 6, 2022. There was a man who really knew what it meant to carry the cross. Hey, thanks for joining me for Perk Stream today. I'm glad that you stopped by as we continue our journey through the faces of Lent, as we look at people that Mark highlighted in the story of Jesus' walk to the cross. And one of these guys is a guy named Simon of Cyrene, who he comes from North Africa. He is living right now in the countryside around Jerusalem, probably there attending the Passover. But he's there uh, at a time when there's great unrest in Jerusalem. And he happens to be coming into town and he meets this procession of death as, it's, as Jesus is on his way to Calvary. And here's what it says. This is what Mark says. He says, a certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country. And they, the guards, forced him to carry the cross so Simon is somebody that must have been known to the church community because Mark takes pains to reference not only him but his sons and that these these three men would have been known to the Christians it's like here's this guy right well here's something that he did it's important for us to know now, now why is it that he would have even been put in that position well Jesus Jesus was exhausted he had been beaten he had been abused. He had been spat on. He had been up all night in front of one trial, been put in a second trial, and he in that trial, they decided that the best way to handle this person was to make it as bloody a, a beating as possible. So Jesus has literally physically had everything taken out of him. And prisoners who were going to be crucified had to carry the cross beam to their death. They literally had to carry the execution mode on their back. But Jesus didn't have the strength. He didn't have the, the, the physical ability to do that. And so the Romans said, well, we'll find somebody to do this. And they could compel anybody who was standing around to do it. And in this case, it would be Simon of Cyrene. Well, here's the thing that as we get this, we think this might just be a passing thought. Well, this is just a passing thought that there's this guy who carried Jesus' cross. But uh, Professor Tom Wright makes this observation. And excuse me as I step aside to read it here. He says this, The cross remained Jesus' cross, of course, but not Simon's. But anyone who read Jesus' words in Mark 8 about taking up one's cross and following him would be likely to make the connection. See, anybody who was listening to or reading Mark's gospel would have made this connection. When Jesus was teaching and asking his disciples, who do you say that I am? Peter would make a, a great claim. He said, you're the Messiah. Well, upon that claim, Jesus then began to say he'd be a suffering Messiah, Messiah which Peter took issue with. And at that point, Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. And then he would say to the crowds, look, if you are going to be my disciple, you need to take up your cross and follow me. So, sure, Simon only carried that piece of wood up the hill, left it there where he was free to go. But after that experience, and surely after hearing Jesus' words later in life, we assume that he became a part of the church and he would hear Mark's gospel and then he would go, oh, oh yeah, I did that. I did carry a cross. I carried it for Jesus, but now Jesus is saying, now I need to find my own. I need to take up my own. What he did for the Lord became a picture of what he needed to do and what each of us following Jesus afterwards would need to do. And Paul would expand on this idea when he said, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I that live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Simon gave us the real life form of what it means to carry the cross. And though he carried it for another, he realized and 
all followers of Christ realize at some point we need to carry our own cross. But how does that take on living form? You know, it's one thing to, to say, I'm going to die to myself and I'm going to be uh, patient. But it's another thing to find yourself pressed by a coworker or a family member by demands or by anger or by suspicion. It's another thing to, to find yourself in that position and feel like, well, their protests aren't valid. I don't think I'm going to be patient with them. But we're called to carry the cross. And sometimes the cross leads us into that life transforming place of saying to be like Jesus. I am patient in the face of trial. I'm patient in the face of anger. It's another thing to say, I will be loving. I will take up my cross and love like Jesus. But then come face to face with someone who looks at you and goes, you're not loving. You don't, you don't love me because you don't give me what I want. And you have to face that. And in our culture today, isn't that one of the messages that we get loud and clear? You don't love me if you don't accept me the way I am and give me all the, the rights that go with, with who I am. Well, Simon shows us that what it means to, that, to take up that cross, even if he was not the one to die on it. We see it play out, and then we are left with a choice. Will we take up our cross and follow him? Will we take up our cross? Will we get in line behind Simon and Jesus and take up the cross and walk up that hill? And so I pray that we will all find it in ourselves to hear this word, to be willing to take up the cross and follow Jesus all the way up the hill. And there, once laying down our life, we will be able to take it up again because of Jesus. Mm -hmm.